So um, we're here at Brevard Zoo. This is where I do my research um, and where my students get a chance to work with animals. So we mostly do two different types of research. First we do behavioral research where we um, scientifically observe the animals. So we spend time sitting in front of exhibits and tracking all the different behaviors that our animals are engaging in. This allows us to track social behaviors but also to monitor their wellness so that if the zoo has any concerns about any of their animals me and my lab are able to come and do observations to see if we can help them figure out how to care for these animals in, in the optimal way. Then we also do experimental research. So we do um, experiments with non-human primates on their behavior and cognition. So what that means is basically we play silly games with the monkeys and we get to learn cool things about how they, um, how they learn here. The, the reason that I'm interested in non-human primates is to figure out how humans evolve our cognitions and behaviors. Non-human primates are of course closely related to humans, and so what I do is look to the primates as a model for our evolutionary past. So what we can do then is say, okay, if, if, if we have this trait and we see it all through the primates, then it's probably something that's, that's evolutionarily ancient in terms of its origins. But if we see certain things that we have, some primates have, other primates don't have it, and then maybe another species has it, we can then say, okay, what in our, um, what in our environment during our evolutionary history led to this trait being adaptive? So we can really hunt down the origins of human behaviors and cognitions. So what, the reason that we're trying to use our lemurs and train them on touch screens so that we can ask them about their cognition is because they're really an understudied species in terms of their cognitive abilities. Partially that's because scientists have assumed that their cognitive abilities aren't fantastic because they're the most distantly related to humans. But of course in science we don't want to make assumptions, instead we want to go out and try and test this. So we're trying to uh, get our lemurs into the same types of cognitive testing that have been done with the other primates. So I'm conducting uh, research uh, looking at spider monkey color vision specifically. Um, spider monkeys are really interesting in that they vary in the colors that they can see based on individuals. The color vision in the spider monkeys, it's an evolutionary puzzle um, because in the wild they should both be doing discrimination tasks of looking at ripe versus unripe fruit. Um, if you eat an unripe piece of fruit you can get sick and you could die and that lowers your uh, reproductive and survival advantages. So why is it that we're seeing um, such differences in individuals? So it's an evolutionary puzzle that we're hoping to solve with uh, training. So right now in the zoo we have a number of different projects going on and that varies all the time. We never know what's going to come up with our animals so we never know exactly what we're going to be doing at one time. So we have a few behavioral observational projects going on right now. Uh, one is with one of our jaguars named Philly. She moved into a new exhibit and she was exhibiting some stress related behaviors. So We've been doing behavioral observations on her now, and with those observations, we're able to bring ideas to the zoo management and say, hey, maybe if you tweak this exhibit in this way, she will um, you know, thrive more in these exhibits. And they've taken a number of those suggestions into account, and she's actually doing quite a bit better now. Um, so we're continuing to monitor her just to make sure that she doesn't relapse into any of those stress-related behaviors. Another one of my students who's in the psychology undergraduate honors program is doing her honors thesis on and flamingo breeding behavior. The zoo recently expanded their colony of flamingos from 13 to 53 individuals um, to try and see if that would encourage them to breed. Uh, we'd like to have a sustainable breeding population here, but they haven't been um, particularly eager to do that. So she's been watching the flamingos to try and figure out what they are doing. And again, if there's anything we could do to uh, modify their exhibit to encourage them to do that. One of the things that makes the animal behavior concentration in psychology at Florida Tech really special is, well first off, there's not that many places where undergraduates can get meaningful experience in animal behavior. And what I mean by that is, yeah, you might be able to take a lab class where you work with some animals, but the research that we're doing here has a real meaningful impact on the lives of these animals. So for example, if, if we get asked to do some sort of a wellness project where we're doing behavioral observations, Students might see something and we make a change for that animal maybe the next week. So, so there's really immediate, um, immediate feedback about the research that we're doing, you know, and this is, 
this is much more um, gratifying oftentimes than waiting three years to get a publication. Ready, buddy? Good. So undergraduates can really get a chance to see how these types of data are used in applied settings and see the results of, of what they saw um, changing. Florida Tech and Brevard Zoo started this collaboration and research about three years ago. And this is a, a fantastic collaboration because there aren't many zoos who are really on the forefront of research. Now Brevard Zoo is a small community zoo, but despite that, we're one of the few zoos in the country who's really making research a priority in terms of caring for our animals and getting more information about them in, in the scientific domain. Because if we have these amazing animals that are often endangered, we really should be trying to get all the information from them we can since we're having them in captivity. And again, Brevard Zoo has really been uh, incredibly open about letting us come in and do this type of research and, and really adapting their uh, management style to incorporate science and more and more research. As part of that, most of the research that we do, we do right in front of the public so that they get a chance to see what it means to be a scientist doing research with, with animals. Um, and so that part of the um, uh, public education is something that's also really valuable about this collaboration. Um, the monkeys are stealing the show, I think. Oh yes, there's our baby. Um, so, so what is this? Hi, Prim. This is our juvenile male, uh, Prim. He is very playful and likes to interact with people here at the glass. Right, buddy? Okay. <laughs> Try again. 